Hello everyone, I'm back with a video. I haven't made one forever, but I actually was lucky enough to get the guest for this. I've got from the popular YouTube channel, Jim Mint Collectibles, I've got Mr. Jim Mint himself here today. That's right, what's going on? Thanks for having me. Hey, no, thanks for coming. I know uh, I always like to talk comics, but all my guests are kind of movies. So I figured, okay, obviously this guy knows comics. He knows the Punisher. He knows, doesn't know Faust. I found that out. That's a shame. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, because I've seen you review some of the Punisher omnibuses. Right. And uh, who's been your favorite? Let me ask you, who's been your favorite run in the Punisher? Mine's Garth Ennis. Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to. I was going to say, it's hard not to say Garth Ennis. Uh, I think Jason Aaron does a great job, too. I found myself reading Jason Aaron's Max and, like, really being hit because he'll go deep with the family stuff, man. And, and and then, you know, being a father and a husband, like, if your brain starts thinking about what if, it, it could be it could be tough, man. Garth Ennis is a little bit more on the lighter side but still violent, which is fun. But I feel like uh, I like Jason Aaron, too, and I love what he's doing with the new run, man, the new run with uh, him leading the hand. It's only four issues in, but it's uh, it's crazy. Jason Aaron, if anybody watching the Omni, is, I think it's out of print. So I think so. Bucks. You can source it in, I think it's four trades. There's like the first one, Welcome Home Frank, Bullseye is the second one. There's like four, but I right. like that one because uh, the Kingpin, he got raped in prison. Right. That was crazy. And then he just has all the crackheads run a train on the dude's wife and everything. I mean, that that's was the type of good writing. That's the type of shit that, that that Jason Aaron was on. But the omnibus, you know, being out of print is not like a death sentence anymore as it used to be. Marvel has been like constantly reprinting their out of print books. So I, I would keep an eye out on it, you know, and you never know. It might pop up for a reprint sooner or later. Yeah, they're reprinting finally all the uh, Ed Brubaker, Captain America's. So the first three are out. I think there's still two more I haven't heard. I'm waiting for a reprint on Uncanny X-Men Volume 2, I think, is the one that went out of print. I need that. Is it, I remember when 3 was the big out-of-print one, and then uh, they, re they reprinted it. And they'll reprint multiple times, so it's not even like you missed that second wave and you're done. They, they've been on it. Now, DC out-of-print books, you might be a little out of luck. I don't think they've re they reprinted, like, Infinite Crisis, but I can't really think of many more that they've re been reprinting. They're reprinting Grayson. In, oh, are uh, they? In November, I already pre-ordered it because I do like how they kind of changed him to be like a spy now. I think it's pretty cool. I never read it. I have the omnibus, but it just doesn't look appealing. And it's like, there's so, there's so many more things like that catch my eye before that. But I've heard good things about the run, not for nothing. The picture of James Bond was played by Jason Statham. I think that's about what you would get with it. The Enter the Dragon variant cover they did on one of the issues I really liked. It sounds. I mean, I'm I'm with that, you know. But uh, I got to check it out. I've heard, I heard it was good. Now we're gonna talk now. Punisher movies. You've seen all three movies in the show, I assume. Well, hold on. All three movies in the show. I definitely have seen the two more modern ones. The Dolph Lundgren one, the first one, right? It was it Dolph Lundgren. I don't think I've. I might have seen it as a kid. I don't really remember. The, the the main one was with uh, was John Travolta in it. Yeah, that was with Thomas Jane, and I thought Thomas Jane looked like the Punisher. He was the best. Oh, it was it was good. It was one of those pre MCU superhero movies, right uh, around the time of Ghost Rider. I feel like a Daredevil and all those movies. Uh, I feel like it wasn't bad, but it, it it doesn't it goes under the radar. You don't ever hear anyone talking about that. And then the War Zone, forget it. That was kind of like more of a was it straight to dvd release or no, no, it was a smaller release it just didn't make any money that's my least yeah. favorite of, of the bunch yeah yeah I, I don't remember much of it i remember some nice like uh kind of punisher in the warehouse killing enemies type of scenes i don't remember a lot about it i, I remember liking john travolta but I, i'm trying to not confuse myself with swordfish was he like the same villain from both movies or something yeah and face off <laughs> right so yeah, I'm always like, was that John Travolta or am I thinking about another movie? Uh, and then, yeah, but I think, I mean, the Netflix show to me is obviously the best representation so far. And I love that Jonathan Bernthal, he's, uh, in, he's the character. He's like, he signs comics saying, I'm Punisher, bitch. Like, that's what he signs them as. So it's like, you got to love when the actor is invested into the role, you know? You know, I, and I brought it a visual. I like the, there's a glare. This is a Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Yeah, now, this is overseas. This is you gotta have an all region player. This is a region too because it is the uncut X rated print of mm. the Punisher. My only bitch with that I thought was that he 
Come on. You can't wear a t-shirt with a skull on it. That's the cost. That's a eight dollar costume. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he had knives with the skull, and his family was like blown up in a car bomb by the mob. They kind of they've all kind of fucked with the origins slightly, but I thought that one, I thought Lundgren was just really good. I mean, adding stuff like he he has a headquarters in the sewer. You know, I mean, they did make it campy in parts, but watching it more so now, whereas I like the look of Thomas Jane with the trench and I like Travolta, but this is a Punisher movie where he maybe kills four people. Yeah, that, that was my bitch on that. Punisher should kill 200 people in a movie. Right. Yeah. You know, what's the joke about comic book movies back in the day? It didn't have to even make sense or have any kind of ties to source material. It just kind of is like the character and they just put some random screenplay together or whatever <laughs> well, back in my day the spider-man tv show he shot a rope i mean he'd right. talk in the mask and he would just go like this and he shot ropes so it was now you see and i like the new spider-mans a lot i think marvel is, is pretty spot on with their movies yeah i mean they they grab from different uh source they, they use source material but they kind of mix three or four stories together to like make this thing and i like it i like the marvel funny stuff i still haven't seen thor love and thunder and I know people are trashing it, but I feel like I'm going to like it. Like, I like that goofy humor, you know, because when you take yourself too serious, you get Thor the Dark World, you know? <laughs> Nobody liked that, so. And Thor was created in the 60s, clearly by people on acid. <laughs> right. He's like a trippy, if you read those comics, he's a very trippy looking Viking. Yeah. It should be a goofy movie. And it, it Gardens of the Galaxy is, is a horrible, com- one of the worst comics I ever read. It's got to be something goofy. <laughs> you know, not everything can be serious. I think that's, I think that's my thing with Marvel. I like their production. DC, I don't hate their movies like everybody, but I think my issue with them is they make a movie different than the comics, and then they try to change the comics to be like the movie. It gets confusing. Yeah, and also like with Marvel trying to be on the humor, DC is like so focused on being dark. It's like so you know too much. There's there's got to be some balance there, and then. Yeah, with like Batman versus Superman, like you literally crammed four huge stories into one movie. Like you could have spread that shit out a little bit, you know. Not only did you kill the guy, you even show him that he's still alive at the very end. Like, damn, let, let him at least die for until the next movie, you know? Yeah, I gotta apologize for anybody listening because of my dogs. They like to bark <laughs> when someone goes by my house. I like the Shazam movie, but it, it was kind of weird because like here's Shazam, which is a family friendly movie, followed up by Birds of Prey, which is their R-rated Deadpool movie. There's yeah, no continuity in it. It's like they're just throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks, you know? I don't. Hey, shut up, dogs. <laughs> dogs are goofy today. <laughs> that was my editing skills, just hitting pause while a dog shut up. But uh, no, I mean, what do you think? I think Marvel's best movie, my opinion, is uh, The Winter Soldier. That's been my personal favorite. Um, where would you rank your Marvel films? Yeah, I, I get that. I like Winter Soldier. I think Infinity War is got to be up there. But I'm a sucker for the first Iron Man and the first Avengers because, man, like, we're finally, like, able to say that we live through that. We live through this shit coming out in theaters and being teased and combining four franchises into one and, like, unheard of stuff. And then Infinity War, I just, I liked... The- you want me to stop? I'll just. <laughs> He's not, I'll tell you. Another quick edit. Sorry about that, guys. No, so anyway, Infinity War. I mean, I loved Infinity Gauntlet, the whole Thanos thing. And that was another one kind of like where all these movies led into this one big thing. It wasn't so much to form a team, but to, you know, assemble the gauntlet. And the fact that they really killed everybody at the end, even though you knew they were coming back, I was still like shocked. I can't believe they actually did that and ended the movie. Like, I just criticized BVS, right? And that's where Disney or Marvel got it right. They didn't show, hey, this guy's actually going to be okay. Don't worry. Like, they're gone. You got to wait till next year to see if, if they show back up. My dogs don't behave this bad. My one dog will howl on whatnot auctions, and he gets a <laughs> pop because the crowd actually knows him. My only bitch with the last Avengers movie is I, and I knew going in they were going to do the time travel. Movie. Right. I always found that as a movie guy, I always found that to be a cheap way out. Hell yeah. Yeah, Endgame, I liked Endgame. It was all right, but it, it, Infinity War for me is like the pinnacle, man. Endgame had the, you know, the ending uh, battle, which was dope. And, uh, the, the, you know, the little Easter egg stuff with Cap with, uh, with the hammer and all that. So, yeah, 
I, I liked it, but the time travel, yes, it's a cheap toy, you know? You know, the time travel one, my, one another dream sequence is another one back in the day. That but was- look, now now we got multiverse. Now it's kind of like nothing matters. You can always just multiverse it out. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't really like that. But uh, from what I hear through the grapevine, and, and they did it in the comics. Think about Secret Wars. Like the whole point was to, okay, we don't want to have two separate universes anymore, Ultimate and 616. And the rumor is that's where the MCU is going. So you got to, you do the multiverse, everything is crazy, but you got to, you got to bring it back in to make it have stakes and to make stuff matter, you know? I don't like Secret Wars. I didn't like Secret Wars too. I liked Secret Wars. That would be a good one to do in a movie, but man, you would have to really have a, you would need multiple movies to do something like that. You need multiple movies still to introduce people. But that's the thing. And I'm, and I'm more speaking of like the rumors, like 2015, uh, Jonathan Hickman, Secret Wars. But they need that. They need something to build toward because if this phase four has shown us anything, it's kind of like without that one goal in sight, it's just not as exciting. You're just kind of doing a DC and throwing shit against the wall, a comedy TV show, a movie that you know doesn't really tie in or whatever. So yeah, they, they need that one. They need that big bad or that big event. They had Thanos, they had the gauntlet. Now they got to work towards creating different universes that we care about, introducing Miles Morales and doing shit like that. And then, you know, destroying it and creating it, creating like a battle world when, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a good idea. They should definitely go that route. I mean, What's that? Phase four hasn't amounted to anything. I like no. saying she was good, tied into nothing. Um, I hated the Eternals. I absolutely hated that one. Tied into even, nothing. None of them loop, are looping together. Even though I like the, the Shang-Chi movie and all that, like, I don't ever have a want to rewatch it, you know? I remember back in the day when his dad was Fu Manchu, you know, and, but they lost the rights to Fu Manchu, which is why they changed it. But he was just some guy in some, what, leopard suited uh, gi, you know? So when my son was asking me questions about the new one, I was just like, I haven't read the new books. I just know he's different now. They keep trying to um, start new series with Shang-Chi. I think they're starting their third one now in the last year or so, and they're just not hitting. Nobody's buying it, you know? What do you think of Moon Knight? The, the show? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I figured they're going to go one of two directions. They're going to go street-level brawler, or they're going to go um, Jeff Lemire. And they went Jeff Lemire. So, I mean, I kind of expected that. It's easier to do. It makes more sense to the general audience than having this fake Batman kind of looming uh, over a city and all that. But, yeah, I, I definitely understand the complaints, you know, of not enough Moon Knight in the show. I think Oscar Isaacs crushed it, uh, showing his range in – and, and changing in, you know, without edit in mid scene from one character to the next, like he killed it. He did a great job. Uh, and I liked it. I did enjoy it actually. See, I really liked it until I read one of the stuntmen said that, uh, you know, like all the scenes where, you know, he would be in danger and you'd get that like, and then right. everyone was dead. Apparently they filmed sequences where he's killing all these people and doing all the action. They just didn't leave it in there. It's like, I kind of would have liked to have seen a little more action to it. Well, they never like- even... They never really resolved what that was. I mean, I guess we were supposed to believe it was Jake Lockley taking control, but I guess they kind of did at the end when they showed him what being the chauffeur or something like that. Yeah, for the last like minute, legitimate minute of the of the thing. Yeah, I get. I I, I, did, I would have liked to see those scenes, but it also you know it kind of played out where you know you knew exactly what was going down, you know, and, and they confirmed it at the end with that scene. I liked it. I think I liked it more than a lot of people did actually when I think about it. I like Hawkeye a lot. A lot of people shit on that one. I thought that one was really good. And seeing huh? the seeing the Kingpin again, I like. I don't get why he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, but you know, I think I don't remember. I don't remember if that was a, a nod to one of the comics. I mean, I read the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run, and it was really that. I don't think it had a lot of other inspiration besides that run. But um, you know, I liked it. It was, it was you know, Hawkeye was the grumpy old guy with the younger teenager protege, and it played just like that. And it was kind of like a, a buddy cop uh, movie in, or, or show in a sense. It wasn't one of my favorites, but I did watch it and uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't hate it. It set up Echo, which Charlie Cox and D'Onofrio are both confirmed to be in it. So, Yeah, um, I liked her character a lot, actually, Echo. I, I haven't watched um, Miss Marvel yet. I have not Me neither. sat down for that one yet. I, I finished The Boys. I like The Boys, but I think I like it so much because it has really nothing to do with the comics. I think the only thing they kept is like, Huey and Starlight, because yeah. I mean I can't see many similarities now that they actually dope a little bit of V like they did in the books. I um I'm not caught up on the boys. So what happened was we ended up um having to move, not having to move. You know we moved into a new house, 
And it was a lot of work. And th- I stopped, you know, watching the boys. Didn't get started with Miss Marvel. Haven't seen Thor, Love and Thunder. So I got to get caught up. I just got caught up on three weeks of comic books. <laughs> and I, uh, I got to do actually this week's review. I'm going to film it right after this. But I'm a little bit behind. But I do plan on catching up and watching that stuff. The boys, I mean, so far, they, they nailed it, man. As far as, you know, maybe not uh, as similar as the comics. I don't really remember. I read the comics had to be like seven years ago or something like that. But uh, I think the show d- does a, a great job. Even their Twitter marketing, if you're on Twitter, they have Vault Industries like putting out press releases uh, against something Homelander said. It's just, I don't know. I really like the way that they did it. I like how the show kind of makes fun of uh, the woke, but it also makes fun of like the conservatives. And anytime you can blend that, I'm a fan because I'm not a big fan of like, alienating your customer base you know what i'm saying so i think that this show did an amazing job of like poking fun at both sides and also poking fun of corporations and media and how crooked they are and how they cover stuff up and you know and 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 always try to flip something it's kind of like exposing in this kind in this superhero tv show it's exposing like the way the real world handles these types of situations well i thought uh, jensen ackles i'm a supernatural fan i like jensen ackles He's great as Soldier Boy, but I like how they gave him a whole arc through the season when he was a couple panels in the book. He was just the guy that would have sex with Homelander at Hero Gasm in the book. And now he wasn't good enough not getting in this year, you know, which I thought was funny. It was like, how are they going to take this one page character and give him a whole season arc? I mean, they did it. I mean, they managed to keep it. So I, the last episode I watched is where they teased him at the end. So the next one I watch is the episode with him in it. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, Dynamite was kind of hyping it up, the fact that he was in there. So I guess he must be some kind of fan favorite or something. But I mean, he's like what probably what Captain Marvel or Captain America would be really be like. You know, just he's a dick version of Captain America. <laughs> I like it. I uh, okay. <laughs> and I know Kripke flat out said he will not use the ending from the books for the show because he thinks it would make everybody mad. Actually, in the way the book ended, I made perfect sense. You know. <laughs> What was it? Wasn't it, I, it was something about Black Noir. Wasn't he like a clone of Homelander or yeah, something he was like that? His clone, and he was the one that really went crazy. And then right. he had that bee he was going to put into the air to kill everybody that had it injected. So he murdered like he murdered murdered M.M. the female, the Frenchman, and then Huey ended up killing him. Well, that was Starlight. Yeah, they're all dead except Huey. So, mm. but I yeah. So my wife I got I got his I. I got to see which way they went with it with the show, man. I definitely got to get caught up. We don't even have any TV set up in this house still. <laughs> it's like oh, the last thing that we're worried about because we're doing so many things. The first thing I did when I moved is plugged in a TV. I, <laughs> I, I, go, I have to. Yeah, have- but look at, look, at my, look at my priorities. I got the arcades set up in the background, but no TVs yet. Well, it, it, the thing with the arcades, because we're going to move uh, here. We're down to months now. You, you can't take them apart. I mean, you pretty much have to haul them in a truck and just plug them in. So. That's what I did. I moved all these arcades, man, in a, in a big semi-truck type of trailer and one little gash on a cab. But I'm like, yo, that makes it more like the authentic arcades. They were always dirty and beat up anyway. <laughs> Luckily, they're not too heavy. Nah, hell no. Nah. The pinball machine. Have you got? Did you get the Marvel pinball machine? Never, never got it. I was never into pinball. I should have oh. got the Marvel one because I have a comic book channel and everything, but I just never, I didn't get into it. Oh, I, that's the one I probably played the most. Uh, this Golden Axe one behind me, I haven't played since I cleared the game. That was like the first day I did it because the beauty of these one-ups, you don't run out of quarters. You know, you just <laughs> keep going like that. So that free play. Cool. Well, see, and what I love is that now they're putting them online. So you can actually play Mortal Kombat 1 online with somebody else which is to me an advantage over what the original arcades had i mean you had you had people in person which was dope but yeah to be able to play anybody in the world on a a 19 a 90s arcade game is dope as hell to me see i've got killer instinct but i don't play it online because i can't beat the computer on easy i just kind of got it because i wanted to have i remember being in college when that hit and people waiting in line to play that i just wanted that machine in the house so killer instinct is a game that i was good at as a kid and I played good with Orchid, but uh, I get my ass wrecked online. You know, I'm like, I can't even. These people have been playing the whole time. I haven't played it in decades. <laughs> I stink. I am I remember when I used to be able to beat the Ninja Turtle game on like, it cost me six bucks. I probably have put in a hundred now, but I'm also not taking the patterns to go after everybody. Yeah. yeah. What do you, let me ask you, what do you think of them killing Donatello in the Ninja Turtles? 
Yeah, I liked the IDW run. I, I fell far behind. You know, uh, it was it was serious. It was intense when they what was it? Bebop bashed his his shell in with a yeah. hammer or some shit. It was brutal, man. And I'm a big fan of Metalhead, and I like how they kind of incorporated his consciousness into Metalhead. But I think they he they brought him back eventually, didn't they? Oh no, I haven't read that far. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I just read the last Ronin finally like a week ago. Last Ronin was great. But was it? Here's what I, I liked it. I, I'm not saying I disliked it, but at the end, was he dead or was it a dream? Oh, I don't think it was a dream. I think it was. I think it was real, and it seems like they want to continue that universe. At the end, they said something like that, right? Like to be continued, maybe yeah, or he, something he, like that. And he flatlines, and he's with all his brothers. So it's like, okay, are they all dead now? Does he, he die, and then they just continue with April and Casey's daughter, who's like, you know, got some mutant DNA in her or whatever? And I that, like, that doesn't sound as interesting to be honest but uh yeah maybe he died yeah yeah I, got, I get what you're saying i mean it's kind of one of those endings that could be up to interpretation you know i mean if, if jumps turtles the one thing i've given him credit for and i remember being young when the first books came out which i should have hold, held on to to this day but <laughs> they uh i've had taken a lot of losses in collecting comics but uh turtles they reinvent themselves it seems like 10 years they go and they always manage to find a new audience. I, I have to give that franchise. I've never seen a comic franchise do that. Yeah, how are they able to do that? You know, they, they stay away from dividing their audience is one. <laughs> and it was, it's a tried and true thing. You know what I was always a big fan of as a kid is groups that kind of have similar attributes. I loved Ninja Turtles. I loved Power Rangers. I loved Wu-Tang Clan. I loved Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like, I love that kind of like Voltron, shit like that. It's like a tried and true thing, you know, and uh, they, uh, like you said, they reinvent themselves. I hear that IDW is losing the license and I, and I hear of rumors of, you know, who wants to pick it up. So that's an, another exciting uh, potential new story that could come out because right now the IDW story, I kind of lost interest. It sounds like you may, may have as well yeah. because uh, I'm behind in the read. I was reading it in the hardcovers and yeah, I think I stopped reading shortly after the metalhead Donatello stuff. And I, I think they brought him back. I'm pretty sure they did. I like the Power Ranger. I like Power, like Shattered Grid. And I like Power Ranger. I hate the artwork. The artwork mm. is really bad for me, but I like the stories. They do a really good job with that one. And I think they're, they're I haven't picked up the G.I. Joe stuff yet. Me neither. The G.I. Joe I didn't get into, but the Power Rangers, I like the artwork. I thought it was like very flashy and fast like the show was. And uh, it's another one that after Shattered Grid, I kind of fell off. Like I loved... Kind of just like the same with Turtles. They started with the origin again. It felt like everything that was cool about Power Rangers with none of the cheesiness. Uh, and then Shattered Grid took us into a new direction with a new villain, which was dope. And then after that, I kind of lost interest. When you start introducing Zeo Rangers and all that shit, see, you're older than me. I was a kid when the first season hit. So I was like prime for it. But even when like Turbo came and all that shit, I was too old for that and it got too corny, you know, but... I got to experience that first season like at the right age where it, it hooked me, man. We would ride our bikes home from school to catch the Green Ra Ranger saga or to see who's the new White Ranger and all that shit. So it was a dope time back in the day. I never understood when he was the Green Ranger, he beats the shit out of these guys every episode. He becomes a good guy. And now he just gets his ass kicked every episode too. It's like joining <laughs> that team must make you a loser, but... No, I, do, no, I even like Dino Thunder. My kid, well, you know, when he was born, it was Dino Thunder that kind of hit. So I watched that, and, you know, Jason David Franks and all his shit. Well, I still dig the franchise. Um, it's and, just, and, I, and what I love about Jason David Frank is that he repped that shit from the beginning until now, when it was cool, when it wasn't cool, when it was cool again, he was always, like, solid. So I always, like, really respected him for that because there was a time when I was in high school, if you liked Power Rangers, you were a loser. Like, you know, like, no one's in high school uh messing with power rangers so I, I always like that fact about him and him doing the stuff with uh bat and the sun awesome and their shit forget it talk what about comic stuff i haven't seen a beat down in forever i have yeah well they they still do stuff man and um actually i talk with uh aaron every now and then he's a statue collector as well but um yeah, I, I remember finding them and binging the hell out of them. And like, why is this not the Wolverine costume in the movies? Like <laughs> Wolverine with a mask fighting the, the predator for, of all people, you know? So nah, their shit, their shit is tight though. Yeah, it's just, like I said, I, I liked it. I always watched the beatdowns and then 
I think they're working on a movie now or something. Are they with with, with Frank? Are well, he they, no, they did it. They dropped a, a Batman movie recently, and it did like I think at the time it broke four million. It's probably oh, way more than that. Stars but... or something like that. I forget what it was called. It was good. I, I I always liked the Batman Deadpool that they did. That was always one of my favorites. Yeah, I think they had Joker. Did they have Harley Quinn or something like that in there too? Or Joker, Harley and Harley and Joker Quinn? against Domino and, and Deadpool. That was yeah, yeah. No, they had they Batman. had a lot of they had a lot of great ones, man. And and I like how they kind of uh I think they started doing it with two different endings. And I'm a video game guy, so Power Rangers versus Mortal Kombat. I think it was Scorpion oh, yeah, versus yeah, Scorpion, yeah. Green Ranger or White Ranger. Crazy, man. And then what was it? Uh, Akira from uh, Street Ryu. Fighter again? Or, yeah, it was Ryu. Then he changed at the end when he was fighting. They always right. teaming up with uh, David Frank. There's the Ranger. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I love about it. Like, like he's so committed to that role, even when it's not. I don't. I don't know if they had to get a license to do that or not. But even if it wasn't like uh, Saban putting it together or whoever, like he was willing to work with uh, Bat in the Sun to do that. That's awesome to me. I was excited for the new Power Ranger movie. And, me too. You know, I didn't like it. I mean, I liked yeah. the end, but I didn't want to sit there for an hour and a half before they even become Rangers. I had lost, yeah. even the kids in the theater were like, they lost interest in it. It was, it was the like same director from uh, Chronicle, right? Yeah. And I liked Chronicle. We watched it the other day, actually. My wife was like, I've never seen it. And we put it on. I think we might have fell asleep during it. But I did like it when I first came out. And it was kind of that same discovery of powers kind of thing, right? And uh, in the cave, very similar. Yep. And, and the one thing I got to plug quickly is that I really like, and, and I can never say it because you never see this as a franchise. It's a dynamite book. I think they're getting ready to put out the second collected volume. Red Sonia and Vampirilla meet Betty and Veronica. Oh, yeah. That was one of the slickest things I read because I like, I mean, I read Archie when I was a little, real little kid. I watch Riverdale. I think it's a great show. I've always loved Vampy. I've got all the Warren bags. Mm. Red Sonia, I could take her lead. But combining those four characters uh, going against Dracula and Draculina, I really liked it. I thought it was one of the cleverest things I've read in a long time. Yeah, shout out to Dynamite, man. You know, I work closely with them. And, you know, you know, when you see the inside, it's like, man, they, you know, they had the licenses, the, those Th those characters have you know core fan bases already and doing fun stuff like you said in, in you know indiegogo campaigns or team up books so yeah i like how they have the license and they're willing to experiment and do you know quirky stuff i mean dc does it they have like what batman versus scooby-doo or some shit like that <laughs> yeah, they did all those characters there's aquaman and jabber jaw and i can't remember who the joker was with i remember they were all kind of funny though i mean they were yeah, yeah. all yeah. afterthoughts dc i've always liked dc heroes better it just they're all over the board. That's why I don't. So, so what's funny is to me, I always like Marvel characters more, but I enjoy DC stories more. DC's had some, I mean, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Batman. Batman Hush was good until the, the last issue, I thought. But just, yeah. they've had just, they've had more iconic stories, I think, than Marvel. And then even their current stuff, I think, even though they have a lot of Batman titles, there's a lot of them, but there are a lot of good ones there too, you know, and. You know, Marvel's got a lot of good stuff as well. Like, I'm a fan of the big two. I'm a superhero fan more than a comic book fan, I think. You know, I like superheroes. I got into this seeing trading cards and video games and cartoons as a kid in the 90s. And I, I recently, as an adult, was able to go back and read all this stuff. Because as a kid, I never even understood it to begin with. I was trying to read Spider-Man, but the next issue takes place in Untold Tales of Spider-Man, then Web of Spider-Man, then Spect Spectacular Spider-Man. Or, or X-Men with the same shit. I never really understood how to follow the comics as a kid, let alone being able to afford all that stuff. Uh, you know, all the, all the comics that were necessary to read a story arc. So, you know, I got back, you know, I got into the omnibus and I really got into reading a lot of the classic material. And now I read the weekly stuff like I showed you and, you know, try to keep up what's going on currently. I don't do as much weekly. I do more like the Omnis and trades now. It's easier for me. I, I don't have to wait. And then... Because I, I kind of stopped when Doomsday Clock hit. And that started coming out. It was a great story. started yeah. coming out so fucking sporadic. I'd get the next issue. I'd have to go read every one before it because four yeah. months passed <laughs> for some reason. So Yeah, you tra trade. Uh, it. It's called trade waiting, right? Or, or hardcover waiting. And, and that's what happens, man. When I, when I got into Omnis, that's all I read. And I felt like I was so lost in what was current. But now that I'm up to date with what's current, I have less time to read the back issue stuff. So... It's tough to read all this shit and constantly work and do other things. So it's a, it's a struggle, man. <laughs> I just discovered Crossed the other day. So I had to buy all the books uh, and now I got to read that. What I thumbed through looks really good, very hard. Avatar Press does some really out there stuff. 
I haven't read Cross. I've seen it. I think uh, my, my buddy of mine who I, I used to do videos with, Rock and Robbie, uh, I think he was a, a fan of that, but I haven't gotten into that. I got the Brubaker Daredevil on me yesterday. I keep looking at it because it's the one with the Kingpin cover. I'll read that eventually. I have not read any. I feel terrible because I love Daredevil. I've not read any of the Chip Sardusky stuff, and I know it's going to get collected. That's what I'm looking oh, yeah. for because a bunch of the trades, I think the first to Heaven from Hell, that's like a hundred bucks right now. It, it went no, they're, gonna, so they're definitely going to make an omnibus for that. They're not leaving money on the table. It's a great run. He finished it, even though this week a new number one came out. And I haven't reviewed it yet, but it just kind of felt like, did this need a new number one? It feels kind of like the same thing, <laughs> you know? But I did read Devil's Reign. I did like that. I like so, a lot so, of indie stuff now, like Maniac in New York, Bronx is burning from uh, after sh- That was good. It's almost like I, I started to really get into the indie books. But uh, Oh, yeah, for sure. Indie, it's easier to get into indie stuff because you don't need to know all the history, interesting new takes, you know, in stories and ideas and not bogged down with, you know, decades of character history. But that's a Darsky run. I really liked the beginning. I, I felt like it dragged on a lot towards the end. During Dark Rain, uh, Devil's Reign, the, the Daredevil in prison stuff felt like, you know, so, as someone reading monthly, it felt like it just was dragging on, you know? So the beginning, I really liked, though, the first couple arcs. If you had to recommend one comic book movie, could be Marvel, DC, and indie, only one for someone to watch, what would you pick? One comic book movie? Only one. So a lot of MCU shit goes right out the window because it, it watches better in full, right? It's hard not to say um, The Dark Knight, you know, the um, it's hard not to say The Dark Knight. Uh, I, I'm a Spider-Man guy. I don't know. I have a lot of nostalgia for like, you know, the first two Spider-Man movies. But let me let me just let me think of, you know what I would say? Yeah, I think I think you'd have to go Spider Man too because basically you're asking me what's the best comic book movie of all time, right? <laughs> what's the one that I would recommend? I think Spider Man Two is, is the, one of the best comics to movie blends as far as the atmosphere and the tone and I don't know the train sequence. Obviously, I, I'm going Spider Man Two, man. You like the Christopher Nolan Batman movies? Yeah, well, I, I like I like the Dark Knight easily better than Batman Begins and uh, Dark Knight Rises. I felt like Rises, I felt like Batman Begins was an okay reboot, similar to how the new Batman movie was. I remember back then being like, that was a cool take on Batman. No big deal. Dark Knight comes out. It's a, it's a different movie, man. Like the Heath Ledger stuff, you know, the Christian Bale Batman stuff, but then Rises, you can never, you, you had big shoes to fill. You can never fill those shoes with Dark Knight Rises and as many people as many people liked it, I didn't really understand the Bane thing. Like you totally changed the character, the voice thing, uh, the whole com- all the Nolan movies. I think they are the worst Batman movies ever made, in my opinion. So, but dark. So, what is your take on the Dark Knight? Like everybody loves it. People will say I don't it's love the best. It. I, I don't like it at all. But out of the three, it's easy, easily the best. Yeah, I mean, I got to give you that. I think my picture <laughs> with it, and, and here's where, and I have to tell, I got a buddy that's always like, I'm not watching that movie because Captain America's suit is the wrong shape. I'm not that big of a nerd. Yeah. Because those movies aren't made for comic collectors. They're, they're not. They're made for the general audience. Yeah, but look what we grew up with, bro. We well, So we grew up, again, the Tim Burton Batman movies were cool, and then you had Joel Schumacher, but that's like all we it. had. Yeah. I liked it as a kid. It was I a like, corny I ass. I liked the Val Kilmer movie. I got on 4K. Fuck it. So we we had that, and then we had what did we have after that? Then we had the the Chris the uh, the, uh, the Christopher Nolan stuff, right? Yeah, and I think my thing like I thought Heath Ledger played an amazing heroin addicted bank robber. I don't think he was the Joker. The yeah, so his take on the yeah has been Caesar Romero from the old Adam West show. And I knew it's a boss because he wouldn't even shave his mustache, fucking paints it. But right, I, you know, the Joker does not have a scarred face. He doesn't lick his mouth like he's looking from yeah, he wasn't he wasn't the zany lunatic joker. Uh, he was the anarchist. He was yeah, the cha- the chaos. What do you call the uh, the <laughs> uh Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park? He was a chaos theorist. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Is he, he's more of that. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, I, I guess I see the argument. I still, I loved it. I enjoyed his take on it. Like we got the Mark Hamill Joker. That's probably the definitive Joker. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Good. Jack Nicholson did good. Ja- I wasn't a fan of that. He was the gangster, right? He was the guy 
he was the he was the gangster he the he Tommy the Gun. So what are you the are you a Michael Keaton? Is that that's I your that's Michael, your era? Keaton is a good Batman. He was in bad movies. Uh, and my complaint with with the two uh, Burton movies is my complaint with all the Nolan movies. They lack action. And if you watch The Dark Knight, I think I timed it. He's Batman for less than thirty minutes in the movie. You know, yeah. at least when Val Kilmer was the Batman with his fucking credit card and that, he was beating the shit out of people through the whole movie. You know, On like ice that. skates. <laughs> no, that was Clooney. That was Clo- Clooney. had the ice skate. Clooney, was in Clooney didn't have the bad card. That must have been that was Clooney with the bad card. No. Oh, that's right. Val Kilmer was going to get takeout when he went out on the thing. That's right. He's sitting there. I think Batman Returns is my favorite, like of that era. I love the cat. First of all, who didn't love uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman? Danny DeVito as Penguin. You can't. He, he was perfect. You can't beat that that casting in that role. Now they did. What was what was the guy who did the new uh, Penguin? Oh, it was uh, Colin Farrell. Couldn't even recognize him. So yeah, you could have got anybody. Colin Farrell did a good job. But yeah, that's kind of like the Heath Ledger Joker. Like that was a gangster version of Penguin. And I guess, you know, I read modern comics and we get different takes of these guys all the time in each run, depending on the creative team, depending on if it's a canon book or, or a black label or an Elseworlds. So I'm already kind of used to getting different versions and I don't mind it in the movies as much. But um, I see, I can see that, I can see the complaint. You know, you're gonna have your favorite version of the character. You're gonna have different, you know, types of jokers and some people are gonna go towards this one. Some are gonna go towards that one. Uh, so what do you say? Is it Winter Soldier? Is that the one that you would recommend? Winter Soldier's mine, hands down. And, and I have to reiterate why I hated Batman Begins. At first I was yeah. excited because here he's coming down. You know, he's using this stealth, which we've never seen. But the minute I watched it and they go, well, you're going to train with Raz Agul. I was like, okay, well, you're pronouncing his name wrong. And this is a, this is a multi-million dollar movie. You can't get the name right. It's Rage. So yeah, it makes and me it was think. Not trained by this guy. Am I saying it right or not? Is it Raz or Raish? Right? I is Raish? It's Raish. Is Raish in the cartoons, right? Yeah, Raish in the cartoons. Even on the Arrow TV show, it was Raish. They just had Oliver Queen call him Raz because he's supposed to be kind of a dick, kind of like okay. Shine White instead of Shine White. But and I like the Arrow show a lot in the beginning. But and then begins, you know, and I'm watching it, and Katie Holmes is terrible. And you know, it was kind of like my thing with three when he's like. Well, I had to quit being Batman because someone I love died. It's like that's why you were Batman. Your parents died. Right. Yeah. They, they were just and now, things that a normal person's not gonna notice. Yeah. But as a Batman guy, I'm that's gonna true. tell you what I here's where I get shit. I think the most well done, and I'm gonna throw anime in here, the most well done superhero thing I've ever seen is Teen Titans go to the movies. I haven't seen it. I mean, they have the, you know, they're they're trying to prevent heroes from being made so they can get movies. And you see mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne's parents and they're getting ready. Let's walk down this alley. And you see like guns and everything. That's crime alley. Why don't you walk down happy land or whatever? <laughs> and then when they cut back to it, like, okay, we got to make sure the heroes are born. Raven grabs Martha Wayne and puts pearls on her and kicks her down the alley. So Damn. I mean, it's just little things like that, that I just found so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Little, yeah, little kind of Easter eggs and nods to the source material and, you know, playing with it. Yeah, I, I, I got to check it out. What's it called? Teen Titans Go to the Movies? Teen Titans Go to the Movies. I think the adults in that theater had more fun than, <laughs> than the kids, to be honest with you. You know, you know man and everything. And it's fun. One, one day I got to do a proper DC animated movie watch through. I mean, I've watched a handful of them here and there, but they seem to come out often and quick. And it's like you can't you fall behind, you know, but. When they did like uh, Infinity War, that whole first one, because I've watched them all, I like them, I review them, all led up to right after Flashpoint. They all connected, leading up to Dark Side coming to take over Earth and everything. And then the I way it see ends, him. that starts this new era that we're seeing now. So they all blend. They're very good. Even their Batman Ninja Turtle animated movie was, it's a beautiful 4K. But that was fantastic. Watching I read the com- better. I, I read the comics, but I haven't seen the animated movie. It's good. My the thing with the animated movies, I mean, like, uh, what was Doom was actually Tower of Babel. I mean, you got to change some stuff to time condense them, but I think they can. DC can do TV shows and cartoons so well. They're just missing something with the movies. And Marvel, I think yeah. their cartoons are terrible. They right. That's kind of it. the that's kind of the consensus, right? Everyone feels like DC uh, dominates the animated movie scene. Marvel doesn't, but then the movies, Marvel. Marvel got it, got it where it counts, it seems, with the movies, you know? 
Marvel's Avenger, the two Avenger movies they did, I, those were pretty good. And then they made some, the Punisher one, the Punisher Black Widow was garbage. But uh, no, DC, I'm a big, I like the Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash. I like the shows, I like the cartoons. They just, I even like some of the movies. I love Peacemaker. I love some of the movies. They just, there's no consistency. I think that's the only thing I ever bitch about. I like the four hour Snyder Cut. Yeah, I like, I love the Snyder. I love Justice League, the Snyder Cut. I liked Man of Steel. BVS, I, I'm the type of guy that I, I get the the flaws, but I'm still entertained. I still like seeing my favorite characters on screen. And yeah, I like seeing all these nods to the source material, but I just feel like they rushed, they should have never even did BVS. They should have did Man of Steel 2 and introduced Batman in, in his own Batman movie. But it's like they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. If they don't follow the more Marvel formula, you know, they're not going to be successful successful because everybody wanted this cinematic shared universe so they kind of tried to do it but they tried to do it their own way and it just it just failed all together man see i didn't hate man of steel like when he kills zod i i I have no problem with that you're gonna kill this guy i mean it's common sense my bitch was watching him grow up it's like here i got another brooding character i got this guy on a boat he's depressed and he's sad Mm -hmm. like to me superman has always been you know, happy mom and apple pie. He had a good, yeah, he had a good upbringing. He shouldn't yeah. have that. He, yeah, he never would have been a wanderer like that. I, I mean, that didn't bother me. The Zod thing didn't bother me. First of all, I think he kills Zod in the comics anyway, in the first interaction or whatever. But uh, he was screaming in rage that he didn't want to do it. You know, he yeah. didn't want to kill him. He wasn't like, yeah, motherfucker, you know? So he was like, don't make me do this. And he, he's, you're going to make me do this. And he hated it. I liked it, man. I thought it was intense when that shit happened. I, I was like, holy shit, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> I liked Superman 2 when I was a kid a lot because of the big fight at the end. Watching it as an adult, it's terrible. Like one guy gets punched through a Coke sign. Then the guy's going into a Marlboro band. It was all a big product placement. The only thing I like is is the music. The dun, da, 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 which, you know, the I could never get into it because, you know, like, again, I, I grew up in the 90s. I grew up with the Batman uh, movies, and it was hard for me to go back and get into those movies. Like, I, I understand. I respect that it was the first one, and you could believe a man can fly type of stuff. And, it, you know, but it just, it was, it's too dated for me to get into. Yeah, I think it's like you have to be there during that time growing up with it, and that's your nostalgia thing, you know? That's why I always tell parents if you're going to try to relive something with your kids, they're going to hate it. <laughs> And you're going to end yeah. up at the end of it hating it too. Many times, hey, let's watch this. This was one of the best things ever when I was a kid. And 10 minutes in, now I hate it. It's fucked up my childhood. So some things are better left as memories. Yeah, I try to get my kids into this stuff. I'm trying, I can't put my finger on it. There was something recently that I tried to get them into, and they're like, ah, it's too dated. I'm like, this is dated? Like, this looks awesome. But I forget what yeah, it was. That's, um, <laughs> it's sad. You know, the only thing, movie I would tell everyone to avoid is the Captain America movie where Nick yeah. Brady played the president. The 90s very one. Bad. I ha- that I've seen <laughs> recently, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, like yeah. within the last decade. But yeah, that was bad. That's bad. Now, The Incredible Hulk with Luke Brigno. Right. I Respect. don't have a problem with that. You know, it was a guy no. that was painted green. You know, it worked. But see, the thing is, my kids can't wrap their minds around them not having CGI at the time. You know what I mean? It's like hard for them to like, this is so corny, but they didn't have it. That's all they had. It changes. I know I've been taking up more than 15 minutes of your time. I want to thank you very much for doing this. This guy's got, sure. the, you know, hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands on the YouTube. I get 20 hits. So maybe that'll <laughs> change. I don't know, but I'll also be on the website, but you know, thanks so much for coming. All we, where's all, where's all your plugs? Yeah, I guess, you know, the main thing is uh, YouTube, Gemin Collectibles. I do weekly comic book reviews, like I mentioned, but I'm really into the collectibles. That's why I have the arcades. I like to collect the big statues and do unboxings and the omnibus that you mentioned. Like, I, usually I have a big omnibus collection behind me, but uh, we're going to build custom shelves for that. So, yeah, I, I try to put out daily. We'll be at San Diego Comic-Con uh, next week, working a lot with whatnot, doing a lot of sales, a lot of exclusives and stuff like that, and just you know, taking advantage of all these opportunities, man, doing this thing full time, having fun, trying to live that life. Living the dream. That's it, baby. I'm not living the dream, but I'm living. So that's part of the dream. But yo, uh, that's all we can do, say, man. You got to stay healthy in our older age. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's why I got a desk full of vitamins and supplements here. You know, congrats on the house. Congratulations on all the success. Thank you. Thank you.
you know, you can follow you him on you can follow Jim in a Facebook group, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. So you can always go to www.hardcoregraveyard.com where I encourage you to go. That's my bread and butter. Thank you. You know, thanks so thanks. much for joining. I really do appreciate it. Mate, thanks for uh, wanting me to come on here and talk comics and movies with you. <laughs>